A couple of years ago, I was teaching a robotics course, as I do every year for the last decade or more. And uh, it was demo day, demonstration day. Basically, what we have is first year students, artificial intelligence. They have to build a robot, uh, program it, and then it has to run through a track that we make for them, containing all kinds of obstacles and objects that they have to take and solve some problems, etc. One of the hardest uh, obstacles that we have for them is a seesaw. That's basically a board that you have to climb up first, or the robot has to climb up first, and then you read the middle, it turns down, and you have to descend, right? And this particular robot, uh, what, what we were watching, uh, wasn't probably uh, uh, programmed right and, and, and a little bit too heavy. So it was trying to ascend the seesaw, but the wheels started slipping, and it wasn't making progress. It was moving the wheels, but it didn't go anywhere. So like we were all watching this scene, you know, cheering the robot on, especially the team that built it, of course. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, there was a fly coming down, descending right next to the robot on the seesaw. And it started walking upwards, beating the robot. People started cheering for the fly, obviously. <laughs> and then, for some reason or other, the robot started moving, and it came on top, and so the board uh, flopped. And then the paths of the fly and the robot uh, started merging. It was almost like the robot was trying to drive, take a revenge, if you like. And so people were a little bit afraid. Well, the fly came out all right, etc. And everybody was laughing. It was a very, very nice scene, actually. But I started thinking at that particular moment, in all these years that I've been teaching that class, we have never, me, my colleagues, the students, we have never, ever thought about what would happen if suddenly an other agent would appear on the scene uninvited. We are thinking about the robot. We are thinking about uh, the task and how they match. But we never ever thought, you know, what would happen if a fly would join in the game? Let me explain to you why this is important. Uh, robots will be in our homes. We don't know, 20 years, 30 years, but we all expect a kind of revolution, the same as in the 80s, when at the beginning, 1980, nobody had a computer, and by the beginning of the 90s, everybody had one or more, and now we have several carrying them around all day, right? Something like this is going to happen. Robots will be in our homes to bring us drinks, to make our food, clean the floor, etc. They will actually help us stay uh, longer in our homes when we grow older, to be independent for a prolonged period of time. But these robots will be big. They will be in your home. Would you trust these robots? What if something unexpected happens? So mind you, my problem is not exactly that robots will take over, as you can see in movies like uh, The Matrix or The Terminator. You know, I'm not afraid that they will decide to lay on our couch and have us serve them the motor oil type of drinks. Okay, because they're like refrigerators. We don't know how to build a machine that is aware and it has goals for its own. They are like refrigerators. The refrigerator decides when to switch on or off, but it's not going to think, I'm going to toast some bro bread instead, right? That's not what's going to happen. What the problem is that I'm dealing with is the, how to foresee exactly what the consequences will be of a robot's actions when it's exactly trying to do what we designed it for. And this is not always because of the complexity of the robot, but because of the complexity of the environment it's operating in. The world, as we all know, is a dynamic place. In households, there's not just me, the owner, but there will be cats and dogs and children and visitors, and they will all be interacting and that will be unpredictable. Let me give you an example. Uh, there is a, a robot now that's being used in lots of households, the Roomba. Basically, it's a dust cleaning robot, and uh, it's actually moving around on the floor at a very low speed. It's a very simple system, and it's collecting dust. Let's take a look at a brief movie clip to see what can happen. Away. Move. 
Poor dog, right? I mean, a motorized cat, what can you do? <laughs> but the problem, of course, is that the people building that Roomba thought about everything. They know this Roomba inside out. But nobody ever thought or could have thought about what will happen if a cat uses the Roomba as a tank in order to attack a dog. <laughs> no? And this is our problem. Because legally, we have to take proper care in foreseeing unintended consequences of our products, we as roboticists. So what do we do in order to address this problem? I can see only one solution, and that's basically giving robots the capacity to assess certain situations, to assess their own capabilities, and then think, I should not be trusted doing this now. I can hand over a cup of coffee to something, to someone, okay? This is not a problem. And we've all done this many times, thousands of times, etc. But when that person that I'm giving as a robot, giving the cup of coffee to, holds out its hand right on top of his laptop, then I shouldn't take the risk. Because I can be trusted, but not a thousand out of a thousand times. Just like we all made mistakes handing over a glass of something, right? And so this robot should be uncertain at the right moments that its actions will lead to the right consequences. So robots, in a way, should be capable of distrusting themselves. Right now, right here, I shouldn't be trusted doing this. Moreover, robots should be able to communicate their distrust, their uncertainty about themselves at those moments. And what do people do? We all are uncertain at certain moments, even though it's a task that we can do quite well. What do we do? Well, we hesitate. And we start looking. I, I look at you, I think, uh, shall I give this? I'm maybe, you know, doubting a little bit, moving back and forwards, really checking if you see me, maybe by hands tremble a little bit, etc. Our robots should have the same intuitive way of communicating uh, their uh, distrust of themselves at those moments, at their uncertainty. In a nutshell, in order to build robots that we can trust, we have to build robots that distrust themselves. Thank you.